How's it going? It is all the news all the time. And uh, my name, as always, is Adam. Yeah. And uh, I thought we'd look at some interesting news today. I just want to say it's really kind of you to be here. And I want to say thank you to all the new members. We're approaching 5,000 subscription. I can't believe this is cra going crazy. I thought this was going to take a year to get to 1,000 subscribers. When I first started this, I thought, um, we're going to go on track. I'm going to keep putting videos out every day. And by the end of the year, we should get to 1,000 because I looked at the charts and I was looking, yeah, should in a year get to 1,000 subscribers. But we got to 1,000 subscribers in three weeks, not a year. It was insane. And uh, ever since, it's been growing really well and the channel's been growing and it's it's going really well. Everything's going really well. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's watching, and it's really kind of you. And if you are new, make sure you are like and subscribe. And uh, and yeah, let's have a little look. Let's see what's going on. We got this guy again. <laughs> I like this guy. He's delusional. He's Captain Delusional. Uh, is this Johnny Depp's son? Have a look at his face. Would you reckon is this Johnny Depp's son? Would you say if you were Johnny Depp, would you open your arms and say, "Ah, oh, welcome back, my beloved son"? Uh, would you say that? Um, I have issues with it. <laughs> I have issues. Uh, let's have, well, I've just got issues generally, but um, uh, I've got issues with this specifically. Let's have a little listen okay, to so him. Johnny Depp was in the Philippines, 1986. 1986. Platoon. Platoon. There's a photo of a young woman sitting behind him on set, and I believe her to be my mother. Um, my birth certificate states my biological father is unknown. Um, she was also given a citation for not let, uh, registering a live birth. For up to a year right so this guy <laughs> he's the, he thinks he thinks he's johnny depp's son um and what's his evidence he's done one of these um dna today tests not a specific dna match test with johnny depp which would be 99.999 percent accurate johnny depp would have to do a paternity test he would have to do a paternity test the dna would then have to be matched and it would be a very very accurate uh, statement but no he's done one of these uh, ancestry DNA test that you can do online. I've done one myself and it told me all about my history, where I've come from, um, mostly uh, England, Wales, Ireland, Scotland, and uh, Norway, Scandinavia, and Denmark. So it's like I couldn't be more white, basically, is what I'm saying. I could not be more white. <laughs> like super hardcore uh, Northern European, uh, as you can tell from my hair. I think that's, that's basically what's going on. Um, but this guy has done this DNA 23 thing uh, and the ancestry DNA thing. And that tells you a general area where you're from, but it is not a specific DNA test match to Johnny Depp. Not only that, uh, if I can play you this little bit uh, again. Um, my birth certificate states my biological father is unknown. Uh huh. And then I want to play this little bit. A woman sitting behind him on set and I believe her to be my mother. He doesn't even know who his mother is. He literally <laughs> he doesn't know his mother. He doesn't know his father. He's just picked a random woman and said, mm, maybe, and then picked a random guy and said, maybe. Um, so <laughs> so there's, there's some serious lack of evidence going on here with this guy. Like, serious lack of evidence, to be sure. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Jen Dan, he was saying, if he's saying that Johnny Depp's is dead. I'm saying that he's my husband. Good move uh, from Jen there. And uh, possibly Charlie Sheen <laughs> from Platoon says, Lynn, yeah, possibly. Uh, BB says, I see the resemblance. Uh, she sold or he sold on it. I don't think so. Uh, use code cleanse. I don't think so. Uh, Jasmine, his mother and him have photos together. He doesn't know if it's that. She, he doesn't even know his own mother. Like, he doesn't even know. How, and he did a DNA test that confirmed. No, he didn't. He did a DNA ancestry test, uh, which is a more general thing. They're good, but they're not uh, specifically to Johnny Depp. Um, I think he's very much like Johnny Depp. Who are we to judge? Well, we are to judge, to be honest. We are to judge because, you know, this is factual and we can make factual decisions. Uh, he bears a strong resemblance, uh, says Christina. She's sold, uh, but she's looking for proof as well. Uh, what does Johnny say? <laughs> that would be a good Johnny Stevens where the guy says, uh, who knows? Who knows what's going on? I think it's um, a bit of a cockney chancer uh, putting it out there. Is it possible? Is it not possible? Could it be? Could it not be? Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a try. <laughs> Brilliant. So uh, what else is going on? Oh, yeah. Uh, get yourself some Dior uh, Sauvage, Sauvage uh, from Amazon if you're in the market for this uh, Christmas uh, season, uh, there's, I put a link in the description if you're looking for some Dior Sauvage, uh, Sauvage, and why would you not? This is the Eau de Toilette, not the Eau de Parfum, which is the stronger one, more expensive one. 
and the elixir is even stronger and uh, people do like it but it's very expensive uh, i think it's about 150 pounds it's very but yeah everyone is saying that the eau de toilette is the choice it's the lighter but it's uh, it's really good and people love it so if you're in the market for a uh, dior sauvage and why would you not be uh, then links in the description it helps out the channel and that'd be really kind if you were to go down that route that'd be so nice uh, but what else is going on oh yeah we're looking at lily rose depp uh yeah so i was thinking about this question for quite a while and i was thinking should i make a video on this i don't want to be negative about lily rose depp because um i like the whole depp clan uh, but i thought as there's so much coverage i thought we'd better look at it and sort of have a think about it so we've got lily rose depp she wants you to know that she's not a Nepo baby. And you might think, what is a Nepo baby? I think most of you know what a Nepo baby is. But if you don't, it comes from the word nepotism. Uh, and nepotism, I had a little look of the meaning of the word. Nepotism comes from the French, nepotisme. Uh, from the Italian, nepotismo. And from Italian, nepos. And it means nephew. Ah, of course it does. And it's a reference to the practice of popes appointing relatives, most often nephews, as cardinals during the Middle Age and Renaissance. I'm looking at you, Medici family over there. Yes, I am uh, looking at you. Uh, so that's that's the root entomology of the word. We've got uh, nepotism, and it's this principle of uh, if you've got famous parents, you can get an easy ride into the industry. And uh, I think this guy in the back, this Beckham guy, he's the one who's uh, giving everyone a bad name, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> he's giving everyone a bad name because he's um he just hasn't got the talent of his of his dad and he keeps trying to be different things uh today he's like a chef tomorrow he's a bartender next week i don't know he's a plumber uh the week after that it's just this list of things so uh, the, the guy's uh <laughs> guy's crazy so let's have a little look uh lily rose depp she wants you to know that she's not an epo baby and i'm like oh sort of yeah uh, but she said in an uh, interview with Elle magazine, she said, it's weird for me to reduce somebody to the idea that they're only there because it's a generational thing, she said in the profile. Well, that's the first concept, isn't it? Are you there because your parents are Johnny Depp and Vanessa Paradis? Are you um, walking for Chanel because of your famous parents? Or did you um, earn your place there like every other model? Um, and the question, or the answer to that, I think, is sort of both, to be honest. Um, she's saying people are uh, going to have preconceived ideas about how you, uh, how you got there. And I can definitely say that nothing is going to get you the part except for being right for the part. Now, this, this is true, but it's also, I don't think it explores the whole concept, does it? If you are a brand, and you're a small brand, and you see Lily Rose Depp come through the door you might easily think to yourself, well, free publicity uh, without the cost of Vanessa Parody or Johnny Depp. I can bring in Lily Rose Depp and it gives us good brand awareness. It increases our reach. Uh, we get pages in the newspaper. We get articles printed around us. And uh, all we've got to do is hire this, this, uh, this model. So she becomes attractive to companies because of her name. And that means that she is right for the part, but that isn't a part of her work ethic. That's just part of her innate characteristics as she is a daughter of this guy. Um, so there are people who have criticized her, uh, notably uh, Vittoria Serretti, and uh, she's an Italian model. And uh, so she's, she said some stuff about the whole concept. And um, she says, I get the whole, I'm here and I work hard for it, um, concept uh, but she would say uh, would you uh, I would really love to see if you would have lasted through the first five years of my career she said on Instagram um, and that's a very good point isn't it it's uh, it's the other characteristics of being part of a famous family it's the access to loads of money that you don't need to to go to the get the job and get paid and use that money for food and rent and travel and accommodation the fact that Johnny Depp has got houses all over the world that you can stay at, the fact that he's got chauffeurs, drivers, aircraft, tickets, food, clothing, access, uh, he's got uh, contacts in the industry. Uh, same thing with Vanessa Paradis, they've all got these contacts, all this stuff that you can use that you might think, you know, it's just a little bit here and a little bit there, but it, overall it adds up to a massive amount of stuff that if you can just fly to Milan and you've got a house in Milan you can stay in and then you fly to London you've got another house in London 
and you fly to Tokyo, there's another house for you to live in Tokyo and the flights are paid for and you don't need to get paid and you don't need to get worried about whether the money's going to come in. Sometimes these women don't get paid for like months after the catwalks. So yeah, it is really hard to survive this first initial five year setup. And without that initial name behind you, uh, Soretti, maybe change her name to Vittorio Depp or uh, Cage or um, Travolta or something, she would have gone through the roof with her work ethic. So if we look um, a little look at Lily Rose Depp, we ask ourselves, is she just uh, relying on uh, being Johnny Depp and Vanessa Paradis' daughter? But she's working really hard. She's, if we look at her, as we see, IMDB page, she's in, uh, she's in Tusk at the moment. She was in Yoga Hoses, The King, The Dancer. She's got credits all over the place. She's coming out in a new production, which is called The Idol with The Weekend. That's in post-production at the moment. She's in another one called The Governess. There's a film called Nosferatu, which I thought was um, Bella Lugosi, but it's not. Uh, she walks for Chanel. She's been in loads of stuff already. She's clearly putting the work ethic in. And then the next question or the next sort of concept we're asking is what can she do about it? She can't not be Johnny Depp's daughter. She can't, um, she can't not be what she is. It's part of her innate characteristics. Your parents are your parents. You can't you know, like pick different parents randomly. Um, and then we'll, we're sort of looking at another question. Now, this IMDB page is saying uh, they should all be banned and uh, we should never have nepotism they should be dragged their privilege into the open and such life this is more nuanced i think this this independent article is talking about uh, dragging it into the uh, open but exploring it slightly more um lords leon is uh, again a daughter of madonna and uh, is doing well but uh, some people like nicholas cage they got access to the um industry uh, because of their parents but then they worked incredibly hard and they transcended that concept of being part of something. And there's lots of examples of that. Uh, the Fonders, Nicolas Cage. Um, sometimes it doesn't work. And uh, when you have people who aren't as competent, aren't as hardworking, don't do as well, I'm looking at you, uh, Beckham, uh, they're going to get dropped from the industry quite quickly. Uh, they're saying down here, um, if you, if you, where, where are we talking? La, 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 la. Yeah, if Miley Cyrus couldn't sing, she wouldn't be performing at the Super Bowl. If Nick Cage couldn't open a movie, it wouldn't have lasted. He wouldn't have been long before the studios stopped casting him. Um, it is a popularity contest, and you can only coast so far on inherited goodwill. So, so there is that aspect to it as well. And then there's the other innate characteristics of it. When you've got a good-looking guy like Johnny Depp and a very beautiful woman, uh, in, the, in the form of uh, Vanessa Paradis. When they have a child, they have very good looking children, or they could do, and Lily Rose is you know, very good looking. Plus you have all the, uh, the fitness benefits of having enormous wealth, you have uh, personal trainers, you have access to um, surgery if you wanna go down that route and you wanna have uh, you know, breast implants and facial surgery and all the rest of it, cosmetic surgery and you have recovery, you have nutrition, you have all these benefits of being um, of enormous wealth. So all that together adds up to usually a very good looking um, person. And we know that the entertainment industry is very driven by being attractive. So, so there's that side to it as well. So I don't know, there's a whole lot of aspects to it. And I think what it comes down to is Yes, she has had enormous uh, access and privilege, and now she has to work incredibly hard to overcome this um, concept that people have of her, which is that she's only there because of her family. But she can overcome that if she works really hard and performs well. And if she doesn't, she's gonna get dropped by the industry. Um, so that's it's really down to her at this point, and we shall see uh, where, the, uh, the chips, where the chips lie when they are thrown in the air. So that's, that's pretty much my thoughts on the issue. Look at some uh, recent fashion, as I like to do every now and then when I see some stuff going, what is up with this guy's face? Jesus Christ, man. So Zac Afron, Gail King, and what well, I mean, what, more stars who have turned heads, at, <laughs> something's gone on, uh, at this year's Toronto International Film Festival, also known as TIFF. Uh, there you go. Uh, so this is from She Knows, maybe she does. What is going on with that? Um, Okay, and okay. So let's have a little look at some of these uh, these looks. 
what have we got going on here? We've got this first guy, So In Guk, So In Guk, and it's not exciting. It's, I mean, it's not, is it? It's just, it's just a, uh, it's a dinner jacket with a bow tie and a white shirt. It's, I mean, fantastic. Uh, to be honest, this is what I would wear if I was going to one of these events. So I can't really talk um, too badly of it, to be honest. It's, it's sensible. He looks sharp, it's sensible. What I like is it's a proper bow tie. It's not a clip on, you can tell because it's not perfectly symmetrical and it's not square. So it's a proper bow tie. It's a proper dinner jacket, um, satin lapels. The, the sleeves are great, nothing wrong with that. Brilliant. Uh, so what have we got here? I like this very much. We've got Jung, Jung So Min, Jung So Min. Really like it and she's wearing a uh, Moschino. Moschino, I always wanted to pronounce that as Moschino but uh, I was told, no, it's called Moschino. And it comes from the uh, Autumn Winter 22 Ready to Wear collection. And, uh, and this girl looks extremely moody. Uh, someone has just told her that a boyfriend is staying around his uh, ex-girlfriend's house after a party and they're sleeping on the sofa uh, and she's not best pleased. What I like about it very much is the taps, or if you're American, faucets, faucet. Uh, <laughs> these are faucets. Uh, but in, in the UK, these are taps. Uh, all the uh, heads of taps. I like that. I like the quirkiness of it. I always like Moschino. Um, and I like the taps. For uh, what else is going on? We've got what this is. Uh, is this who is this? This is Kate Bettingstar. I thought this watered silk in pink bubble gum. Love this uh, this uh, line. Brilliant tailored in. We've got some edge to it with this black. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, PVC or yeah, black PVC or rubber or is it latex it's one of those one of the uh, more saucy materials i'm going to call it and uh, it likes it creates a nice contrast between the two things it's tailored in i like the fact there's no belt yeah it's very nice indeed this is from the spring 2022 back my uh show and it's the pink strapless high low hem and uh very nice indeed so the back my spring collection in watered silk very nice uh, Brian Cox there he is Brian Cox in his uh, check jacket the guy who has opinions about everything and uh, actual information about very little so uh, he's in a Rupert the Bear um, jacket which is very nice what have we got here uh, Catherine Hardwick she's a director she turns heads in this white suit with blue leaves because uh, this is the Toronto uh, Film Festival and so we've got blue maple leaves I like it it's kind of interesting uh, I do like it. I like the shoes as well, uh, tied in quite nicely, and the necklaces. She looks like she's uh, she's angry about something. Well, I'm not sure what she's angry about. She seems to be a Alexander McQueen favourite. So this is back in 2015, so the autumn winter collection. So she has been wearing quite a lot of Alexander McQueen before. The Valentino Fall 2022 Haute Couture collection. Uh, which has some very interesting other dresses in it. If we quickly slam through a selection of them, uh, do pause the video if you want to have a look in more detail. But uh, there are some very interesting shapes and colors here. A lot of pastels, a lot of feathering, a lot of glitter and this uh, mint translucent sheer material it's very interesting shapes going on yep going on uh, down here we've got mini driver this year's mini driver it um, it looks too tight it looks too tight on her um, she looks like a sort of Power Ranger, and I'm not sold on it at all. Uh, what have we got here? Gail King, and um, it's a lot of yellow. It's asymmetrical hem. It's it's not great. It does no real favours to anyone, and it's kind of really bright as well. Um, it's sort of difficult to look at. In uh, yeah, it's just worrying. Uh, here we've got another angry woman. She's angry about something, and uh, I like the shapes. This uh, <coughs> this neckline is really interesting. This uh, scarf, and I, I kind of this is kind of sexy because it looks like she's not got any trousers on, and that's kind of sexy in a way. Um, and I like it. 
yeah, very interesting. What is this? Lily James uh, and the sexual look from Victoria Beckham. Victoria Beckham, that uh, that Nepo baby herself. <laughs> That's who she is. Uh, Julia Stiles, uh, Butcher's Crossing. Um, don't like it at all. Not at all. Um, no. It's got crazy shoulder pads from the 80s. It hangs like a, a burlap sack. And uh, it's just altogether pretty awful. Moving on. This really nice. Look at this contrasting colours. The orange and the purple. Uh, they're on the uh, colour wheel, aren't they? They're next to each other or sort of adjacent to each other. Or There's something on the colour wheel about orange and purple, uh, which is really nice. I like this uh, off the shoulder, which is quite deep off the shoulder. I like it as a strap that goes across. I like the pink. Um, could do with being a touch shorter so it floated over the ground. Really nice. I really like that. Viola Davis, and that's from uh, Greta Constantine for The Woman King. Really nice. I like that indeed. What is going on here? Um, funky. Funky outfit. Uh, she's a mechanic. She uh, she fixes uh, old Mustang cars. Uh, she needs some socks, but all over quite chic and sleek. Melissa Barrera, scream actor. Okay, and uh, yeah, really nice, really nice. Uh, the mechanic outfit. What do we got going on here? Um, looks like it doesn't fit properly, and we've got a lot of black going. And it's like a whole thing. It's like a shirt that turns into a dress which is kind of a weird looking thing. It's a shirtress, shudress. It's a really long shirt that turns into a dress with black leather boots. She's a dominatrix, always like that look. Uh, she hasn't got any makeup on, although she has, and it's, it's popping out at the front, which I'm not, you know, I'm not sad about. Am I okay? <laughs> I'm not sad about that. Uh, what do we got here? We've got the space alien, Tilda Swinton. There she is. Um, I, what's going, what's going on with this? Um, so I would find that so annoying that you couldn't put the collar down properly and that would really do my head in after a while I'd be like but the collar won't go down properly and very square shoulders she's from the 80s and uh, <laughs> she's a space alien and she knows it and she likes it and so there you go uh, very nice we've got Jennifer Lawrence looking very chic in Dior can't go wrong with Dior uh, what is going on here Ah, uh, very, it's really nice. I like flowy, I like the sheerness of it. It doesn't look like she's forgotten her trousers. It sort of looks intentional. I've seen this look before and it looked like she just came to PE class and didn't have any trousers on and was made to do PE in her pants. But this looks like it's meant to be like this. There's some sort of uh, strapping netting thing going on here, which I quite like. And all over, it's it's good. It's all good. Oh, whee, whee. Uh, we've got a lesbian geography teacher from the 1980s mini driver and she's in a orange and pink silk suit combo from Camilla and Mark she reminds me of my uh, old art teacher uh, this this does this this color is crazy it's like a Ford Cortina from the uh, 1980s there's a lot of uh, 1980s stuff going on here I like the pointy shoes I like the pink and the orange it reminds me of uh, art teachers what else we got there <laughs> what's going on here this is Kind of either your body's too small for you for your head or your arms are too long or something's going on here um it looks like a shirt you found in in the cupboard you didn't think mm, i'm not going to iron it no sod that just put on some trousers put on some trainers you're good to go all right so that's billy eichner looking yeah, lazy uh so what we got here she's uh she's confident about herself she's like hey i look saucy she's got some sort of waistcoat thing corset thing going on here and which is matched with the trousers which are far too wide and they're all rolling on the floor um i don't know it's got a hip hoppy vibe to it uh, all over not a fan not a fan it's from versace but it's it's not great what have we got here we've got uh, <laughs> a very mumsy coat which is okay and we've got a very dull and uninspiring uh, polka dot thing going on here and hugely thrilling. Uh, this is generally terrible. Uh, Paul Dano and terrible. And what do we got here? Uh, you know, uh, he's turned up. He had to get dressed, you know. Uh, he couldn't turn up naked, so he put a jacket on, a t-shirt and some trousers, and that's cool. We've got, uh, they're saying so handsome, blah, 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 no. Who have we got here? Joe Jonas, much better. Uh, whatever the monstrosity he was wearing earlier, that was just dreadful. This. He looks like he's uh, selling 
um, Colombian marching powder in Miami a lot and I like that uh, very much so uh, banana wow that is yellow that is a whole load of yellow it's affecting my monitor I'm, I'm worried about screen burn from this yellow that's going to burn into my screen forever who have we got Kobe Smulders does she um, Tommy Machevsky Machevsky uh, yeah pockets you can't go wrong with pockets it's nice I like the color I like the shape yellow is crazy yellow though super crazy yellow again it's always this like pinstripe suits it's jackets and trousers on women with like a little twist to make it um, feminine but it's just been done so many times I'm not sitting here going wow what an interesting twist you've taken a men's apparel and you've made it into women it's not it's just you know it's just a jacket and some trousers they're too wide they're rolling on the floor again uh, what have we got here um, really really sort of utilitarian and functional uh, what have we got here simple stunning all black ensemble she's got some uh, I don't know she's got some engineering to do at home she's got to take apart some sort of server and uh, she's busy uh, what have we got here Jessica Chastain uh, this is from El Saab are they the uh, aircraft manufacturers probably not I like it mostly because she's really pretty um, yeah otherwise if she wasn't really that you know gorgeous I'd be like this is boring but uh, she is I don't know what's going on with the hand is she pretending to be a Tyrannosaurus Rex or a swan or something I don't know what is going on here um, it's it's yeah with guys they will try hard with the jacket to make the jacket interesting and crazy and wild and that's what it comes across as I've found a crazy wild jacket and I put it on uh, what have we got here um, I like the jacket I really like the trousers I love the shoes I love this uh, flowery thing this is stupid this is just stupid uh, but the rest of it's really good it just is really good I mean the shoulder pads are a bit much I mean they are a bit much but the jacket color is lovely the trouser color is lovely shoes are lovely flowers lovely this makes it too feminine it just becomes you're pushing it too far there and it's become that makes it silly but the rest of it's really nice um, what have we got here nice uh, who's this Anna Kendrick always like her she's always funny she's quirky and funny uh, she's in Alice Darling with a yellow Tony Machevest and Mat Matic I don't know uh, <laughs> let's try it again Matikavisky Machevisky Matik I don't know uh, <laughs> uh, it's nice it's simple um, and she's quite small and quite petite it's uh, nice it's just really nice there's not much to say about it it's yellow and we've got Swifty um, saucy in a Kim Kardashian sort of way with the gold I'm getting Agamemnon vibes again Nicki Minaj vibes uh, transparency but it's not because she's not really sexy as such Taylor Swift she's not known to be like sexy uh, and you worry you do worry if you were going to go out with her that she'd write a, a song about you the next week and you'd be like oh, good, yeah. um, so Taylor Swift rare appearance on the red carpet sequin gown Louis Vuitton um, I like it I like it loads I'm, maybe you could make these out of gold coins or something that would be nice uh, who have we got here she looks a bit uncomfortable Sadie Sink and she's in Stella McCartney yeah it, it kind of is odd this this cutout section here is too much it's um, you have to be really curvy I think for that and she's a bit um, up and down like straight and she doesn't look very comfortable about it as well if a woman doesn't look comfortable or doesn't feel it and isn't like into it it just looks awkward and weird uh, <laughs> this guy is looking for a fight he's like oh, yeah, I'm gonna punch you uh, Brendan Fraser there he is uh, and he's in the film whale and um, it's just a suit it's just a it's just a suit I like shoes what have we got here oh we've got another dominatrix and uh, oh, <laughs> there's a lot of leather going on here a uh, leather gown I must be right crinkly as she moves along and um, it's just a lot of leather and uh, what's she saying here she's saying I like leather and and spanking uh, what have we got here we've got wow she's got a really nice face uh, Dwayne Wade and Gabriella Union um, satin uh, the, the lapels these are nice this is interesting I mean it is nice I mean he looks masculine he looks confident he looks good I like it um, she's gorgeous gotta say oh this is um, who is that looks like Vivian Westwood and what have we got down here 
yeah, Vivian Westwood, there you go. And um, that makes sense. Really nice. But it helps that she's really pretty, to be honest. And what have we got here? Wow. Wow, Janelle Monet. Um, Aris Van Harpen Couture. Wow. That's really good. This is coming from the um, Iris Van Herpen Fall 2022 collection and really interesting. It is the 3D printed bodice in biodegradable banana leaf fabric. Uh, yeah, I kid you, no, I do not kid. Uh, with stiffened and pleated tulle, which swirls off shoulders and hip like steam coiling from a lake. Uh, so that's what we got here. We've got this translucent three-dimensional printed uh, under structure and then this uh, sustainable banana leaf material. Wowzers. And then you've got this underneath that, you've got this uh, body stocking or um, to cover her modesty. And the whole thing is amazing. That's, that's extraordinary. That's really good. Most impressive. Um, so yeah, Janelle Monet. Uh, feather like gown from Iris Van Herpen Couture. That's really good. Super good. Okay, well, very impressed by that. What do we got here? A red dress. <laughs> it's like, uh, I don't know, we'll go back to this. That is super good. Nice. Um, so Kate Hudson in a red dress. It's, it's, you know, it's not hugely exciting. It's got some ruffly stuff. And we've got Daniel Craig uh, doing his hardest to destroy his legacy of being a macho, a 007 James Bond, by, <laughs> by wearing what looks like an ice cream seller's suit. There you go. And um, why, why are you looking so serious and moody about things, Natalie? And it looks really old, this, uh, this dress. It looks to me like 1840s, 1850s. This, uh, this beadwork, this is quite nice. And this looks really old. Uh, it might well be. It's uh, Dior. And he's trying to be quirky and interesting, but not really. And what have we got here? Oh, this I saw. It looked like she'd just forgotten her trousers. Uh, wasn't sold on the idea. And we've got Oprah, who is wearing basically a large mirror, which might be an indication of her uh, reflective nature. Uh -huh, I don't know and ah, these guys these guys are too funny uh, if you get a chance to watch any of their stuff on youtube it is too funny i recommend uh, the substitute teacher uh, sketch <laughs> very much so um so he's just turned up casual he's like oh, we're going to this thing all right i'm not going to get dressed up and uh, he's turned up saying i've got this suit it's you know it mostly fits i'm going to wear that okay cool and uh, she's turned to nelly Furtado. She's made a few songs that went famous, and that was about it. And uh, is that Daniel Radcliffe? There he is. He's um, okay. <laughs> Elizabeth Moss. I like like this star shape. This pollen in the centre. It's got speckly crystals all the way down. It's um, it's not hugely interesting. And see, after the 3D printed one, I'm a bit disappointed with everything else. I don't like this white top at all. The black uh, with the tulle with the sheer over the top, organza looks great. The white thing is not. Uh, more black and white, shapeless and horrible. Well that's about everything. Uh, so let me know your thoughts and uh, your hopes and dreams. Which one is your favourite um, out of this? I think you know my favourite. It was Daniel Rank. No it wasn't. <laughs> it was, certainly wasn't. Uh, it wasn't at all. And um, that just looks like she's forgot her trousers. Let me know what your favourite outfit was. Not that for sure. And psh, this is this is extraordinary. Did you see the one with the, the pieces that moved? There was one with the motor and the three dimensional pieces uh, moved out like and breathed in and out. It was amazing, amazing. Thing. Well, this is banana leaves, like uh, some sort of fabric made of banana leaves. Amazing, uh, like that very much. So which is your favorites? Uh, saucy, um, he's angry, it's weird. That Taylor Swift trying to be sexy. Uh, yellow <laughs> handbag, uh, dude. No, guys, don't wear handbags. Carry handbags. They just don't. Uh, stop trying to make us yellow. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I've got loads of bags. I've got something like 20 something bags, all for different things, but not a single handbag to my name. And it's going to stay that way. <laughs> what is going on? Um, yeah, art teacher from the 70s. Quite nice. Although it kind of does look like she forgot her trousers. And what's with the lapel? Because she's a space alien, you know, she doesn't know how clothes work. And um, it's a shirt that's a dress, it's a shress. A mechanic. This colour combination is brilliant. I love that. And um, let's move on. And this is nice. Although the buttons down here are a bit weird. I mean, they should be, obviously, they should be up here if it was a normal jacket, and they're down here. Sometimes they go too far. Too far. Uh, a lot of yellow, a lot of red. Looks, you know, looks really tight. Um, and this, it's a lot of uh, haute couture for no apparent reason. She's just really pretty. Uh, she's the uh, sexy funeral goer, which is a weird combination. Ugly, ugly, ugly. That's nice. And the birdcage, really nice. Check jacket. I don't do steroids. And this is really nicely structured. And mumsy, out for brunch. Pink, weirdly masculine. Um, I like it. And what's with the lapels today? And meh, meh. Blue, maple leaves. Um, I think Canadians would like them red, but that's up to them. Uh, this guy doesn't know anything about anything ever. Uh, it's this pink number, the taps for assets, they're for assets. And I'm sensible. And then there you go. That is the Toronto International Film Festival review uh, for you. And let me know your thoughts, and I will uh, see you guys later. Oh, don't forget to get your uh, shopping in early. There you go. Bye bye.